What's up, y'all? Rich Slate here with another great Mega Draft Best of Five. That's right, Mega Draft back in the game as a friendly mode. So excited for it. So, of course, had to do a really fun one for you guys today. This is a great battle between 2021 CRL World Finalist, Mini, and 2018 CRL World Finalist, two-time regional champion, my good friend and co-caster from CRL, Joshua. AC Sharon in the building. Let's go, it's gonna be so much fun. Of course, go ahead and check them out below. Follow them on all different social medias. Mini Minter's got a YouTube channel for Clash Royale. That's in the description below as well. Please make sure you check that out. And let's go ahead, get right into the action and start off with a phenomenal matchup between Mini and AC. All right, here we go for our first draft. And no queen on the board, so Monk not as important. AC has the first pick, spells, Fireball, and that's the first one he picks. That's the only big spell on the board here. So no Lightning, no Rocket, no Poison. So great job by AC to grab that right out the gate. So we see Buildings, Mortar, an interesting mini going with the Monk pick early on. Maybe trying to shut down three Musketeers, which AC actually does really love to play. Interesting early choice here. The bird for AC as well. Cannon Cart, one of the highest win rates of any card in all of Mega Draft. So really solid pick here by Mini Minter to get the Cannon Cart early on in this one. And now AC trying to figure out his next pick, Fisherman. So I do see Royal Giant on the board. There is an RG line really available for both of these, but that monk is going to shut down the Royal Giant, and I wouldn't be surprised here to see Mini Minter pick up a building here, like a cage or a mortar, just to really shut that line down here for AC. He goes instead with the goblins for pick number one, a little bit of cycle, or the, the, the spear goblins. Notice no regular goblins, so if anyone wants cycle here, it's going to be the skeletons, but neither of these two guys really are cycle players. Smart pick of the snowball there. Mini Minter now knows that there's no real way for Josh, for AC to deal with the, the spears on the offensive side of the board other than a fireball. So he has to fireball them when Mini's playing defense with that snowball out, unless, of course, they're right at the bridge for that barb barrel. AC still looking like he might go Ram Rider or go RG. RG is going to be a real tough prospect, though, to go into a Monk and a Mortar. So this is really shutting down, I think, any sort of RG line. Um, th Ram Rider's still going to be tough here as well. All the win conditions now are actually really hard for AC, I think, in this matchup. Now, keep in mind, he now has Zappies, no Fireball for Mini Minter. Great pick. No big spell on Mini's side. AC goes ahead and gets Zappies. The real question here is what's the win condition on both sides, though? Both guys are going to be really in a tough spot win condition-wise. There's no graveyard, there's no minor, there's no flying win cons. I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe AC go no win condition here and try to figure out a way to play Overwhelm. He could also go 3M because there is no big spell and just three Musketeers into Overwhelm. That would really fit a lot of AC's play style. Mini, of course, does take the Goblin Barrel there at the end, and RG... I'm a little surprised here to see AC taking the RG, but there you go. Game number one, Royal Giant for AC, and Mini Minter going with Goblin Barrel, but no, a little bit of bait, I guess, but no real great bait. This is interesting. I really thought that with the Fireball being on one side and the Zappies, we might see AC go three Musketeers, um, but decides instead, going to go ahead and go Royal Giant. I think he'll have a, lot of, a really tough time trying to break through with the Monk and the Mortar. And then, of course, the great single-target DPS like the Prince. So very curious to see how this one shakes out. And Rage for Mini. Great Monk reflection here. And it's shutty, it was shutting down the Fish Boy. So Fish Boy not able to pull here. Doesn't matter. Still nice defense. Now AC throws the Ghost in front of the Phoenix, just forcing out a slightly earlier pickup here with that Cannon Cart. Canicar off its wheels. Phoenix going to go ahead and do nothing. And at the moment, Mini does have the ever-so-slight lead, courtesy of the chip on the left-hand lane, 28-90. And a little bit of chip on the right-hand side for AC, 29-36. AC, of course, hasn't played professionally since the 2020 season, where, of course, won that CRL West Spring Split with Space Station Gaming. And then a uh, kind of a, a bit of a misstep there on, this, on the part of Space Station 
in the fall split leading up to Worlds where they maybe underestimated pain a little bit and uh, found themselves one spot out of Worlds. But ever since then, Josh has joined the caster's desk. It's been a whole lot of fun. And look at this. Rage on defense here. I forgot until just now about that rage change. That's actually crazy. That's actually crazy. I completely forgot about that. Well, you saw it here first, folks. Rage working nicely on defense against the Skeleton King as we go into sudden death overtime. Josh does have the lead, 20-32 to 24-14. As Mini goes ahead and mortars up. And trying to get the mortar out of the way here. Mini should uh, decide to go to single target DPS. The snowball slows way down. RG will get a hit though, maybe two. And RG does get two hits. Phoenix doesn't repop. It doesn't matter though. Damage done either way. Mortar high for Mini. Rage, a really weird choice here in this makeup overall. And now the Monk to protect the Mortar. But the RG comes out, and that Monk's going to go down and not be able to knock back the RG at all. This is really tough for Mini, as AC gets the pull with the Fish Boy. Royal Giant's going to get one, going to get two. Big shots here on the right-hand side, 1186. And Mini's just trying to stay alive. And AC, is he washed? Is he washed? Well, game number one says no. And AC is going to go ahead and take our first game win. GG, well played. What a job there by AC to take our first one. That was a whole lot of fun, folks. And um, and, yeah, and Mini is, of course, going to be ready to get right back in it. Game number two's draft. And I will go ahead and get this overlay adjusted for you all real fast. The joys of producing live even when you're producing at home. So first pick, Monk, on the side of Mini. And I will get these uh, these reversed here in just one second. And there we go, there's our, there's our fixed overlays. So Monk Poison, the picks for many. Poison, one of the most effective spells in Mega Draft mode. And Log still doing fine, even after the nerf. Probably really, really well balanced now, by comparison. Giant Skeleton for AC. So EQ, I guess mostly looking for the can. I think, our, I think Josh is going for Royal Giant here one more time. And the EQ is to try to break through what he expects is going to be a cannon pick from Mini. Although he might go Furnace just because he has the Cannon Cart and the Musketeer. But Josh certainly favoring RG style builds. And there we go. Royal Giant picked. No NATO to, for the Golden Knight. Doesn't really matter. He's more trying to get this behind everything. And many not, not picking anything that's swarmy. And a little bit of cycle here. Mini might go Graveyard with both the Cannon Cart and the Musketeer. He does have Poison. He'd love to force the EQ to be played defensively rather than offensively if he can. That way he can actually use a building to defend against the Royal Giant. E-Barbs make this interesting. Mini did go Barrel last game. He could go that way again, but doesn't really have any bait for that log. So that wouldn't be a great pick for him. Mini might go Miner here. But my suspicion is, my suspicion is Graveyard. And let's see what AC does for his final pick. AC picks Rage this time. Really fascinating. We've seen Rage now picked in both of our games between these two. And it is GY for many. Great pick. And here we go. Game number two. GY versus RG. Two RG games in a row for my co-caster. It's been fun watching Josh go from a I mean, all these guys in this league, of course, but Josh go from a, a kid. He was, I think, 16 in his first pro match and back in 2016, actually. Met him when he was 18 years old as a part of Immortals. And uh, now he's now he's my co, my co-worker as a part of the CRL casting team. And then Mini, of course, just battled his way up through semi-pros till he's now in the mix as... 
one of those contenders. Snowball slows things down. Golden Knight won't get much here. And they stay pretty even. AC to be slightly ahead on Elixir as he cycles Fishboy in the back on the right-hand side. We'll probably put something in front of this because that cannon cart is going to make that into a very dead fisherman. And he decides not to. Skellies defend the cannon cart, and that's just three Elixir. That goes the wrong way. Positive trade here for many. And now with the monk in front of the cannon cart, things go from bad to worse for the two-time regional CRL champion. Graveyard in, lots of damage here. Golden Knight not going to do much to defend against that. Log has to come out. And Cannon Cart's going to shut down the attempted body block at the bridge from the skeleton, from the giant skeleton, that didn't matter. And Mini has more than enough to stop that from being a thing. High with the E-barbs. And you see what Mini's going for here. He's hoping he can get that E-barb away and force out expenditure, and he does. And this is gonna make, that's just going to maintain his Elixir lead. That's all that's for. Right? Just the, the little extra two there forces a, uh, AC to spend a bit more. And there's nothing in AC's deck that doesn't make that a positive trade, right? The snowball's two, and there's nothing that AC can play to really defend that that costs less than three. So smart play there by many, and you see him now putting the pressure on. That's a lot of damage, too. The reflection from the monk. Cannon cart's actually going to stop away from the bomb. And now musky plus cannon cart. Fish boy going to pull the musky all the way in. Fisherman goes down, but so does musky. Nice skellies there to control the golden knight. And this is a shutout so far by mini minter. E-barbs for the royal giant. And now Mini probably goes Graveyard right. There he goes. E-Barbs force out a response. Graveyard does come out right. And look at that. The Monk able to punch the skeleton, the giant skeleton back just a little bit and make enough room for the Graveyard to break through. What a really wonderful sequence there by Mini. That was really beautiful stuff. And it really, I mean, look, he had a great matchup and a, a, difficult, a difficult situation, I think, for, for AC all, all around as he was trying to find some way to, to, to hold off and to break through. Both of those things at once. But uh, overall, that last little sequence, I've never, you know, you, you see the, the Monk plus Graveyard push, and I don't really feel like I've seen the, that specific interaction before. It makes sense. But the Monk able to knock the giant skeleton back, make just enough room for, uh, to get across the, the, the bridge and tank for the Graveyard. Brilliant, brilliant stuff, and now we're all tied up as we go into game number three. And here we go into our third game. And Poison, the opening pick for AC, who did lose the last game, so he has that first pick. Smart pick, we'll see if Mini goes in and takes Log off the board here. It's always an interesting question about the champion pick right now because Monk counters AQ. Mini looking kind of cyclish right now. Goblins, Stab Goblins also very high on the success list overall for, for Mega Draft. Poison plus Earthquake. Interesting. And AC, does he take the pump off of this too? Rocket's still available, and Minor Rocket is a real possible line for Mini, so that does kind of undo the pump play entirely. Trying to make these picks so quickly. And we don't see Mini play a lot of cycles. This is interesting. Mini might be content to play Archer Queen knowing the monk counters because he plans to play defensively the entire time and just go Minor Rocket cycles. We'll see. The hard part for him, though, is, and that, and now with the monk pick, yeah, I mean, I AQ gets countered so hard by the monk. Maybe he doesn't go Archer Queen. The hard part here is the lack of a really good building for Mini. There's no building that really supports the cycle here. He's going to have to wait a little while and see maybe what AC leans towards and then make a choice there. Really, the only good choice for Mini at this point, building-wise, is the Goblin Hut. 
he might go cannon cart and completely eschew a building because he does have knockback from both the log and the snowball. And there is RG on the board. Could AC be going for RG one more time? No, he goes hog. So now Mini either needs to go NATO, which would upend his rocket plans, or he has to go with the... I mean, he could go with something like the P.E.K.K.A., which would be weird. Cage is on the board, too. I didn't see Cage earlier. Cage is there. He goes NATO. I think Cage might have been the more compelling choice there. So now he's triple spell, but with no big spell. And Mini goes Barbs for the final pick. And H Hog Loon for AC. Okay. No building for Mini. It's going to be very hard to defend both a Loon and a Hog. And AC with the good luck here. This is a lot of this is a lot of air for Mini to deal with. And AC just chooses to eat the eat the miner. Good fire spirit here. That balloon should not connect. It does get death damage though. And there we go. Lead is slightly the mini though because of the minor chip. 2646 to 2666. And Josh just cycles the EQ, cannon to the inside. Goblins, we're going to get a lot of damage, so he's forced to play the Monk there. Not an ideal Monk. That's going to put him behind on Elixir by quite a bit. The EQ cycle might have been a bit ambitious here. Poison is available, and that should be easy to poison that out. Doesn't activate the ability and doesn't poison the barbs. Very interesting choice. And Josh is just going all gas, no breaks in this matchup. Nato comes in, and now here is going to come the Loon. The Loon should come with this bird here, I think. No, he'd go to zero if he did. Chooses not to. I thought maybe he was going to try to get the Nato out of commission and go all in because he has been playing very aggressively so far. But Josh slows it back down again. All tied up here in game number three. Mini Minter playing Cycle, which we don't see from him very often. He tends to play mid-weight decks, right? High threes, mid fours in terms of the average elixir. And with the Phoenix getting pulled back, that's going to be a little extra damage there. Nice snowball. And look at the damage that Mini's putting on that right-hand tower. Oh, my word. That tower just got slapped and clapped. So a full hog balloon push on the left-hand side. Poison down. NATO will pull the balloon to tower, though. And Josh really can't cycle that fast to, de to, to put enough damage here, I don't believe. And I think he just got caught a little bit between what he thought he might do and what he wanted to do. Josh needs to get a balloon through this, I believe. Na Hog will get NATO'd. Even then, here comes the balloon. Hog plus balloon. Both get into the other side. Can he poison or EQ here? Can he potentially? No, it's not going to happen. Not going to be enough. GG, well played. And now Mini Minter. Now just Mini with match point in this one. AC going a slightly different direction with the uh, with the very fun Hog Loon. Hog Balloon, right? How, when's the last time you actually saw a Hog Balloon deck? Well, he goes a different direction with the Hog Balloon deck, and now we're into game number four. After a really kind of dominating game number one from AC, uh, Mini now with two in a row, potentially going for the, for the mid, not a full reverse sweep, but for the mid sweep. And you saw the Hog Balloon idea, but uh, it felt like early on maybe there was some tentativeness not pulling the poison on the barbs on tower. Uh, maybe a couple places where there was some deciding whether it was going to be all gas, no breaks for Josh, or that he was going to play defensively and counter. Um, and uh, in the end, it was mini Metro. So here we go, game number four with, the, uh, with game point for mini. All right. 
So we got Monk, Queen, Skeleton King. Pump is on the board. Only one big spell in the Lightning. So now the question is, do you take Queen and Lightning and make her very hard to counter? There's no delivery. Monk is the only thing that can that can counter. I mean, other things can counter, but Monk is the most direct counter. And Mini goes for the only big spell on the board. Very smart. And that kind of shuts down any queen pick. That double shuts down. So now AC really has to go Skeleton King with his champion. He shouldn't pick it yet, though. Of course, now he knows that Mini can't pick either of those two. He should wait and try to use that when he can't figure out what he wants. Go Zappies here, which is really nice against Lightning, actually. Great pick from Josh, recognizing that Lightning versus Zappies is a bad, bad spell situation. Mini with arrows, which would have shut down archers, but he picks archers anyway. So nice. Mini has arrows and archers, so now those archers are going to be really, really hard for Josh to deal with. Really difficult indeed. And maybe gearing up for graveyard here is AC. Ewiz is strange. Maybe Ram Rider for AC as well. We don't see a lot of lava in this game mode. Triple spell for Mini. Graveyard will probably get shut down by those archers, so looking like Ram Rider for AC. Mini could be a lot of different things. Also, Ram Rider might not be bad for him as well. The big question here is the building situation, right? We have Cage, Cannon, Bomb Tower, and Inferno Tower. Inferno Tower might be a pretty good pick for Josh, as it does shut down the Monk as well. So Ram Rider is the pick for AC. He can get by whatever building, and that's a nice one for, for Mini, picking the Mega Knight. It will have good counter push potential, able to knock back and slow down that Ram Rider. What is, does Mini go for a building? He has no win condition. We've seen Mini go no win condition in Mega Draft before, I believe. Goes Graveyard. EQ and Log, both okay for the Graveyard. EQ underrated as a Graveyard defense. Inferno Tower feels like he might want it for the Monk and the Mega Knight, and he goes for Inferno Tower. Smart pick. Smart pick for Josh. Here we go. Game number four. Mini with match point. And this is what we're seeing here is Josh is known, AC is known for playing weird decks, weird off-meta stuff. Uh, and that's really important when you play a game mode like this, right? You're playing decks that you haven't, you don't have experience with. He did look a little out of sorts, though, in one of those games. Particularly game number three. So this is nice. Zappies don't get reflected by the Monk. That's really good for Josh. He's about something in front of these Zappies to control the Mega Knight. Instead goes Inferno Tower low. Those minions could be a problem. Ewiz comes down. Inferno Tower onto the Mega Knight. And the King Tower activation is undone by the Ewiz stunning the Mega Knight. So you see what Josh was going for there. Couldn't make it happen. And now we're going the opposite direction. Ewiz, no connection. Nice snowball from Mini. And the Archers are basically like two miniature... Uh, they're basically like two miniature Expos at this point. Archers are so crazy strong right now. Which is part of why you see arrows all over if you're playing, uh, playing Ladder, playing Path of Legends. Arrows are everywhere right now. And archers are a big part of that. Archers and Firecracker. So passing halfway through regulation. EQ cycle. Just with the even elixir count. And mini slightly ahead. And look at this. Ewiz, Inferno Tower, and Zappies. None of those get reflected by the monk. So... Really good series of picks specifically for the Monk. Graveyard in. The Monk does pick up the aggro from the Inferno Tower, which is what was which, what which is really what Josh wanted. And then that monk totally did nothing. Shut down city, and now it's dual lane pressure for Josh. 
Ramrod to the left. Mega Knight is going to have to respond and respond a little bit late, but definitely has to respond. And now a nice set on the right-hand side. And look at that. Arrows clean just about everything up. Mini Minter with a phenomenal defense and a great prediction on the Inferno Tower with those minions. Brilliant prediction by Mini. Lightning takes the E-Wiz off, and the Ram Rider has to try to slow down, but not can't slow down on Mega Knight. He's already on tower. Mega Knight gets on tower. That's a ton of damage. Snowball to defend, and Mini's putting on an absolute clinic here in the final few seconds before sudden death overtime. You know, you think Lightning in this matchup might not succeed. But used it wonderfully on the Inferno Tower, brilliantly on the E-Wiz. Ram Rider to that left-hand side. Again, Ram Rider into the weak side one more time to give Mini a good counter push opportunity. He has to play Inferno Tower really high now to avoid the Lightning on Tower, and the Zappies get absolutely shredded. Graveyard in being tanked for by the Mega Knight. Josh comes out with the E-Wiz. Going to take a lot of damage here, though, no matter what. That is a ton of damage, and Arrows try to clear, and that should be a GG, folks. What a performance by Mini. Just very, very clean. And now he's going to go ahead and lighten that off. GG, well played. Mini with a clean win after a nice opening game from Josh. Mini comes back one, two, three in a row and puts it together for a really, really nice win here in this best of five. Ended up going four, but a really wonderful four it was. This is, a uh, I love having these two guys battle. It's, it's so much fun to have them here. And of course, great to see Josh back in action. Uh, love watching him play. So, so much fun seeing the weird decks he would do before Mega Draft Mode. And now you get to see him here in Mega Draft Mode. Maybe we'll have him back. Maybe do a creator a creator weekend tournament for Mega Draft Mode. See what they can come up with. Either way, big thanks to Mini. Thanks to Josh for being here. Of course, go ahead and check them both out on Twitter. And follow Mini on YouTube. His link in the description below one more time. Got a great YouTube channel for Mini. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Of course, uh, stick around. There'll be a bonus match here. I think I'll throw on one of Josh's old fun matches just so you guys get a bonus. And also so I don't give away the ending if you see the timer is running up at the end of game number four. You know how I do that sometimes. That's it. Enjoy the bonus match. I'm Rich Slayton. As always, be excellent to each other. Peace. But Boy, as soon as this one. is over, we'll be jumping into Clash Online, so you don't want to go anywhere. In fact, you should be playing in it. Yes, you should. Yeah. You should. If you're not, if you're not already playing in it, then what are you doing? Probably watching this. You trying to, trying do to watch. Both. You can do both. I have never succeeded at watching Clash Royale and playing Clash Royale at the same time. I always do each one. Oh, well, I've, half. I've succeeded at, at doing both at the Not same well, time. Though. It doesn't mean that I'm playing well. Mirror match. Mirror <laughs> match. Yeah, looks looks like it's so far. So we'll see who's who's got the who's got the better read. Nice little fireball value there. I think they're both playing graveyard. Think so? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, so remember, let us know in chat who you think is going to take it. You can vote AC oh, no. for Aw Crap or OX for Oxalate. Well, I read that one wrong. Yep. It happens. You know, we call that the uh, the curse of the caster. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been around for a while. It's an ancient curse levied by an Egyptian, actually, back in the year 4000 yep. BC, who said that if you ever predict something, you will get it wrong 70% of the time. This Is to is that Toby? Uh, is that your, your Toby? Oh, that might be Toby Spearhawk. Yeah, saying what's Clash Online? Clash what's Clash Online? Online? It's, a, it's an online tournament that we, Super League, host four times a week. But if you want to watch it streamed and casted, you'll see us doing it every Monday. And you'll see BBXH every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And you can all sign up at superleague.com slash Clash Online there on the left-hand side yeah. of your screen. All the info is there. And it's going to be, wow, it's Ram Rider coming Ram out from Rider! <laughs> And... Uh, yeah, you can you can sign up. You can play in our tournament. We have we have monthly prizes, both for our tournament winner and of course we have a, a monthly raffle as well for everyone who does enter in. And mirror, hmm. AC just is sitting there going, he's, "I look, he's I have a great time. I refuse to play <laughs> things that you see a lot. And I'm you, against it. You know what? It's working right now. That tower's down to 1551. I bet you Ox did not see it coming. But there's the graveyard there's you the were graveyard. predicting. Yeah, there. One of them was graveyard, but. Bandit's got pretty high attack speed, so 
It's going to do okay, but it's not the greatest answer to the graveyard, of course. It goes down to 1687, which is definitely much more damage than our crap bargained for. And so if you think Ram Rider's annoying for the fact that it connects almost every single time, uh, a level 10, a mirrored Ram Rider, has to be doubly annoying. Of course, Ah uh, Crap threw that one right into a big counter push from Oxalis. So now getting into sudden death overtime, it's Oxalis' turn to put on the pressure, taking some good damage here. Yeah, on the left that's going to be lane. poison and graveyard. The classic combo is going to bring that tower down to 1,200 even. So. At this, you know, it, nice it, it, yeah, it, yeah, there's the Ram Rider. It's going to hop a river. I mean, Aukrap had the lead early, but Oxla is looking pretty fine. But still, it's the split lane pressure from Aukrap that's doing wonders here. And now the poison comes down for Oxla. Put a little more pressure on. Although there's a snowball. It's going to get a lot of value. Yeah, this is good defense from Aukrap. And now he loads up opposite lane. Ram Rider, Goblin Cage to defend from both players. But I don't... Is this Ram Rider... Yeah, it'll connect. Yeah, it'll connect. Ram Rider will connect. Oh, no, Snowball. Yeah. Ram Rider will connect. Is it mirror time? Like, when you, oh, it still does. It still does. And we, we just, we, the bench over here, Frost just going, what? How is that even physically possible? Because that's <laughs> what Ram Rider does. You're like, Ram Rider's not going to connect, right? And then you throw, like, 75 Elixir at a Ram Rider somehow, and she still makes it. Yeah, we're seeing some Pog champs in the Twitch chat for AC with these wild weird decks. Look, uh, they're a blast. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. Look, if you want, if, if you wanted to see something different, you're seeing it today, and and Aukrap's playing it well. You know, screw the meta. That's a thing people say a lot. <laughs> you you it's, over here playing playing your expos, but there will be no expos. Expos Not this in game. the meta right now, but oh, it's banned. Ram it's Rider banned gets picked up by the Goblin Cage, but it's still going to connect on the tower. Maybe we we'll see both a sides. giant snowball. No, it's going to get one shot though, mm -hmm. so it's down to one 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 one. But look at that, 783 on the opposite lane, bottom left. So. We are in overtime. There is one minute and Look 30 at that seconds pressure. left. Look at that pressure with the bandit from from Aw Crap. That yeah. was really, really nice. Gets the connect onto the tower. You can see the Dark Prince is forced to be dropped in defense. And it, and it lost its shield, too, so it's going to be much easier to It'll pick connect. up. It'll connect. It's, it's going to connect. It, yeah, Aw Crap just didn't, didn't, didn't have the care. elixir ready for it. Yeah, he's, he, instead he's going to have this level 10 That's a big fireball. Ram Rider. He's going to be going straight for this tower. That's Mega a big fireball. In. He's pumping. He thinks it's going to wow. be enough. Will it be 65? That's, be it. That's all you need. The snowball comes down. Not 9 quite HP. There. But the cycle. Will this it be This is not ladder, Aw Crap. This will is it, tournament standard. Will it be in time? There's the graveyard. Can you get anything on tower before that? Fireball comes it's in. Be, We're yes. all tied up. Series, oh my God, is it happening again, Rich? This is insane, and let me just say this one more time: this is not ladder; it's tournament standard. And you know that that snowball was like, oh yeah, cool, I can kill this thing right now. Whoo! I'm Ooh. seeing some hashtag IMT wins. We'll see. Uh, a little Rich's beard makes me jealous. Tbh. Thank you. Well, I've been growing it for a long time. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an adult male, and hair <laughs> grows on our faces. All so right. if you're still waiting for adulthood, congratulations. One day it, it might come it, to is you. Is it all that special, Rich? It's, dude, my beard is next level. Let's go to game number six, all tied up. Two and two. Whew. All right, what do, we, what do we got in store for this? I guess, yeah, it feels like game five, but it is game six because we did have that one draw. Ox that was able my to guess on. is that uh, Aw Crap is running Goblin Barrel Mirror Clone and just goes to meme the three crown directly on King Tower and ignore Princess. At this stage, it really wouldn't shock me if he did that. See, Honestly, got, it would. There's one person in Twitch chat that's like down to talk about Twin Peaks, and you know what, Watermelon? I'm, I'm with you. You're my guy. <laughs> and both guys have Giant Snowball. I mean, Even with the nerf, common. Giant Snowball is still really it's legit. It's such value, man. It's only two Ooh, Elixir. Boy. There's another, so, so Oxlade's still rocking the graveyard deck. And Aw Crap going to some version of Minor Cycle. We'll see which one he's if, going if with. If they were a, a duo team, would it be Oxlade, like a h Oxlade? Uh, Oxlade? Yeah. Ox Crap? Ox Crap. Which, I don't know, that seems like almost worse than, than Aw Crap. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Musketeer does get one connection. TJ says, can we get the commentators to say, bruh? All right, bruh. Bruh. We'll do it. We're basically just puppets here, man. We'll yeah, say whatever. Yeah, yeah. you trying to, trying to play some Clash, bruh? Oh. Mega Knight. Huh. I mean, Aw And you know what? I bet you Aw Crap was thinking that maybe Oxlick goes back to the Fireball bait well one more time. Mm -hmm. And that's what that Mega Knight's all about. For just sure. Just sitting here going like, hey, if you try to throw, throw pickies at me. And it's, it is a minor loon deck. All right. 
Uh, I do see Gamer for Life saying, please mention me. You, you, bruh, you have been mentioned. You have been mentioned, and that balloon snowball just gets there. Oh, maybe just the miner's tanking. It's gonna get, oh! No, because the, the, the opposite Princess Tower got a hold of that. Yeah, but still the gets the bomb explosion, so yeah. that's fine. Of course, with the balloon, it's all about that connection. You get some serious damage. Not gonna connect this time, but this game is pretty even. Oxal a little bit ahead on, on HP, of course, this but they both have really explosive decks because it's a graveyard versus balloon. Whoever can get that, that what? crucial connection. Pekka. The... All right, I've seen everything now. Minor Loon Pekka MK. So if you were looking deck. to see something insane, you've seen it today, folks. There you go. There you go. So OP OP Pekka with her crazy range. Mega Knight. I mean, look, Oxley can try to find Balloon. a way when maybe he thinks Ockraft's overextended himself and start throwing some uh, some graveyards Dude, down. It's but just split lane pressure. Ockraft's got the miner to the back right side, the balloon onto the left side. It's, it just finally started taking damage. It's not going to connect. Graveyard left hand side. Here it comes. Here, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, Dark look at Prince that. Look at connecting. that. So much there. Is Mega Knight is down. I don't know if this is going to be enough. Oh, but the minions. Minions do bring a lot of DPS to the table. So graveyard not going to get the value that we were looking for. Wow. I mean, that was the right idea. Got a lot. Got a lot of value still there, Michael. But not quite as much. Oxley had a big <laughs> opportunity there. Poison wasn't able to get down to support and keep those minions off of that graveyard, though. Yeah, and and I mean, look at this. Oxlet definitely has the lead here, but there comes the Miner with the Balloon. But the Balloon will be pulled by the Goblin Cage. Yeah, very well timed. The most ever prevalent deck in the meta. Very, very well timed. Or card in the meta, I should say. Yeah. No, gets the bomb Here we explosion. go, graveyard again. All right, this graveyard. Also wants to do is just oh. start blowing up graveyards. So, and out comes the poison, poison as well. Too. But I the, don't know what AC has for this right he's now. He's got a snowball. snowball. I think that's going to be just enough. The Mega Knight was actually played so crucial because it pushed the Ice Golem away, so the Ice Golem did not tank for the graveyard. Had the Ice Golem tanked there, I, I think that, that could have been a win for Ox. Oh, this is big. This Miner is big. Miner comes out into the backside. Balloon I don't think Goblin is healthy. Is... There's the Goblin Cage. Goblin Cage is going to help Fireball, Fireball in. Oh, is going to take out the Mega my. Minion. Snowball will push it back, but the Miner is still whacking away. The Balloon connects, and the Poison oh, wow. is that Oxalate is going to steal this one right at the death of it. We will not see two reverse sweeps, Rich. We will see the Calm collected. Can't to take a look at Oxlade's face right now. <laughs> he, he was like, I had it, you know, calculated. This it was that, not even close, BB. That was, no, that was that was so insane. I mean, that is like a half yes. step. And now, the, here we go. Let's take a look at this finish one more time. Oh, there, there, oh we, saw, we saw the handshake. Let's go back. <laughs> yeah, Josh was like, handshake on camera, off camera. Oh, the, uh oh, that's some top five action. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's whoa, not whoa, the whoa. correct replay. We'll the replay get will there. Be, there we go. go. Back to the replay. And just take a look at this. Mega Knight. And the Dark Prince turns into the Mega Knight. Look, the Dark Prince was yeah. meant to kind of be a kite. Instead, turns into the Mega Knight. I wasn't even looking at the bottom left, man. And look at that. So now the Dark Prince in support of this push. Oh. And that's just too much. That's just too much. Poison gets down. Dark Prince swings. And look at that. We're just a, we're just a so balloon close. drop away. It was so close.